There's a saying, time kills deals, and being able to price work really fast and efficient and get estimates to customers same day, next day at the latest is key. It all starts with your day rate. I'm going to teach you how to find it right after this intro. Being able to price work efficiently and fast saves you a bunch of headache, a bunch of time, and also it gets your numbers, it gets your business in front of the customer and makes them make a decision and it basically takes you off the hood. That's why I like getting estimates to customers as soon as possible because when somebody reaches out to me for an estimate or price for something, then it's obviously the burdens on me to give that information to them. I do it as soon as possible. That way it's you know, I basically regurgitate it back to the, you know, the lead, the cu the potential customer. That way, it you know, they're either gonna have to say yes, no, maybe, or take a hike or whatever it is. But at least that burden is off me. The best way it took me a minute to do it, but the best way and it's having a day rate. Now, day rate is basically what your business. If you're self-employed and you're doing the work, your day rate is basically your entire overhead for your business. So everything that your business needs to pay for in your life, including your salary as a person who's working in the business. And then you just times it by two and a half. So we're gonna go over the simple math. Okay, so obviously you're gonna your business, you need some place to live. So I have my mortgage, I have you know, truck, insurance, you know, you got your phone, internet, everything you're gonna need for your business. All that's all overhead. Overhead is what costs you money, what costs the business money if you get up for work that day or not. So it's obviously things are absolutely gonna just cost you money all the time. Utilities, who's billing you for whatever that doesn't they don't care if you're actually doing work or not. It's the overhead and overhead, you got to keep it low. It's best to keep it low because overhead is killer. I know everybody likes to grow, grow, grow their businesses, but there's something to be said for keeping your overhead low and keeping your cost of doing business low. And it keeps a little bit of stress off your back. Now, let's go over some examples here. So we're going to say, okay, your mortgage for your house or your office, whatever is $2,000. You have a $600 truck payment. You have insurance that costs 300 bucks. You're going to pay yourself $1,000 a week for working in your business. And that is, you know, you're doing the work, you're, you're, you're pricing stuff, you're doing all of your bookkeeping, you know, that you're, that's, that's your, that's your rate for working in the business is a thousand dollars for, you know, four weeks. Um, say utilities are $400. You've got, um, in, you know, your internet and phone, you know, mine, <laughs> well, I have, you know, a lot of, I have a lot of uh, TVs in the house and stuff like that, but we'll call that $250 fuel charge for driving around everywhere. Mine, you know, mine's like oh, damn near a thousand dollars a month, but like we'll call we'll call yours like six hundred bucks a month, and then miscellaneous. So say whatever else, you know. Of course, if you have a bookkeeper, or whatever, you're gonna know this miscellaneous stuff that's going. But we'll we'll have a miscellaneous of seven hundred fifty dollars for whatever happens, maintenance for vehicles, maintenance for tools, buying stuff, tools break down, stuff like that. Seven hundred fifty dollars a month. You're gonna take that total and you're gonna divide it by the days worked. So we're gonna call it four, you know, four weeks plus one day. So 21 days worked, Monday through Friday plus an extra day. So you're gonna divide that by 21. It's gonna give you about 400 and let's see, my math is 423 dollars and some change here. I'll write this down here. Um, and then that is that is your cost. That's your overhead cost. That's not your profit. That's not what you should be charging per day. That's just your overhead cost, bare minimum, bare minimum. Uh, to keep the lights on, basically, literally just to keep the lights on at bare minimum. So what you do with that number is you times it by two and a half or three. Well, you can times it by however much you want, but I would say no less than two, two and a half. Uh, and then that's going to give you about thousand dollars, thousand fifty nine. I'm looking at my notes here. And basically, that is your day rate. So that's how I calculated my day rates. Mine's a little different than this, but it's not much different. And a thousand fifty nine dollars for a day when you're working Monday through Friday plus one extra, you know, one day. That's what you need to charge. Now, it doesn't matter what somebody asks you to do for whatever job it is that you want to do. If it's going to take a day, your labor cost should not be below that day rate of. So in this in this example, one thousand fifty nine dollars. Now, if you just want to say an even thousand dollars, so be it. Leave that sixty dollars on the table. But $1,059 is the minimum. So if they're asking you to do a punch list worth of work, it's going to take all day. You know your your labor rate is $1,059 plus materials. And it's easy for jobs. You, know, you can look and see, look up materials and add that in there with a little bit of markup as well. But that is how to find your day rate. And that's how I, that's when I found my day rate. And I, I mean, of course, my day rates have adjusted multiple times, being from handyman to contractor, doing the work, not doing the work. Um, it, it all obviously depends if I'm actually on the job site doing the work or not. 
So going forward, basically, you know, if a job takes, you know, a day rate, you know, your day rate, one day, two days, three days, you just times your day rate by the amount of days and give yourself a little bit of leeway because site cleanup has to be included in there, uh, getting to and from doing certain tasks for the customer, stuff like that. You got to give yourself a little buffer. So if you think it's going to take you two days, you know, bill it for two and a half days or even three days. Uh, that's, you know, just quote it out for that amount of money. Just give yourself a little bit of leeway. I will say when I've been doing my day rate when I was a handyman and I didn't know how to, you know, I wasn't quite sure about a project, but I wanted a job. I wanted to, you know, I like, you know, figuring stuff out. You know, I, I, you know, times it by three or four. I straight up lost money sometimes because I underbid the project. I just basically, okay, you know, at my two and a half time rate, I'm not losing money, but I'm not making my day rate. I'm not making money either. So, but there's some jobs where I straight up almost lost money because of how long it took, you know, learning curve. But I learned and I never made those mistakes again. I know how to price a little better, all that kind of stuff. And it absolutely helps out so much. Now, bigger projects, you know, if you're subbing cer certain work out, there's different ways of calculating stuff. You can take your subs, you know, quote and multiply it by, you know, either, you know, double. So you just times it by hundred percent and give that to your client. That's, that's ideal. 50% markup is ideal, but not always realistic in certain areas, but you're going to need to make, you need to make profit on everything on a job site, everything. Easiest way to guys to quote jobs, find your day rate. How many days does that job take? Now, if it's less than a day, half day rates now, nothing less than half day rate. So $500 is a job minimum should be yours. If, if you're at the 10, you know, 1,059, you know, call it 530 for a job minimum so if they want you, they want you to come and replace a a faucet uh or a toilet or something else your job minimum is that 500 dollars, and you can tell them hey yeah my job minimum is 500 and some dollars in labor but if you have something else i can do at the same time i'm still billing for that that half day so the toilet's going to take me minutes not hours if you have something else maybe one or two other things i can just cram in there and you get your money you know the client gets their money's worth and you still get your half day rate now, if it's going to go over a half day rate, you're just going to charge for a full day because you're more than likely not going to be able to compound another job into that. And you might be able to, but, you know, you know, being safe than sorry, you might not be able to, you know, go to the next job. So if it takes three quarters of a day, you're charging for that full day rate. And that's what I got for you guys. You know, price out jobs real quick and easy. I mean, yeah, a, a bigger project is going to take a lot longer to quote out a little bit, but that's why I charge. And I also, you know, absolutely charge for on-site estimates because your time is not a renewable resource and either is mine. But day rates are super easy way to pop out, you know, pop out pricing to a customer, to a client or to a lead real quick to make sure that they know that that's the price to do the project. You absolutely know that you're going to be making money on that project. And of course, include material costs with markup as well. Material markup can be anything anything from 5% on up. I would you know, be careful about marking stuff up too much with materials, especially, you know, look at your local laws and as far as that's concerned, but you need to be making money on everything that you touch for a client. Like and subscribe, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. I appreciate it. I hope this thing helped.